How Everything Everywhere All at Once Became an Oscars Frontrunner, Netflix's You Fans Divided Over Insane Ending Following Twist in Fourth Season. How Everything Everywhere All at Once Became an Oscars Frontrunner. Less than a year ago, Everything Everywhere All at Once was released on 10 screens across the US, grossing over half a million dollars in its opening weekend. From there, it expanded and has since earned more than $100 million worldwide, becoming the independent production company A24's first film to do so. Its box office success was matched by critical acclaim, racking up enough accolades to have their own Wikipedia page. In January, Everything Everywhere garnered 11 Oscar nominations, including for Best Picture, Best Director, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Skanert, collectively known as The Daniels, Best Actress, Michelle Yeoh, Best Supporting Actress, Stephanie Su and Jamie Lee Curtis, and Best Supporting Actor, Kuhui Kwan, the most of any movie this year. But nobody expected for the film to make it this far, perhaps least of all the Daniels, says Jeff Young, co-author of Rise, a pop history of Asian America from the 90s to now. This was an indie spring release, while most Oscar heavy hitters, by major movie studios, premiere at prestigious fall film festivals. Other Best Picture nominees, like All Quiet on the Western Front and The Fablemans, for instance, opened at the Toronto Film Festival, while The Banshees of Anishirin and Tar premiered in Venice. Elvis and Triangle of Sadness debuted at Cannes, and Women Talking at Telluride. There were so many good stories about the film, but they're all the kind of stories that point to indie success and critical darling, Young tells Time. They don't point to awards blockbuster. They definitely don't point to a clean sweep every major mark of inevitability that is possible coming up everything everywhere all at once. Feel-good stories swirled around the movie, including, but not limited to, Kuhui Kwan's return to acting after nearly two decades away. Then, between mid-February and early March, came a string of recognition from Hollywood, the Directors Guild of America DGA, gave Daniels a trophy for feature directing. The Producers Guild PGA, bestowed the film its top honor. The Screen Actors Guild SAG, showered it with awards. The Writers Guild WGA, named Everything Everywhere Best Original Screenplay. Not to mention the Golden Globes that Yo and Kwan picked up in January. The movie soon became a veritable frontrunner for Best Picture. But, as Young qualifies, I have to sometimes be reminded that all of the accolades coming from these guilds and even the Academy Awards if we actually put them into context, the only reason why they are so meaningful is because we haven't had them in the past. But they really are this weird sense of us clutching at the hem of the Hollywood establishment. In early March, the Annenberg Inclusion Initiative launched the Oscars report companion to its forthcoming inclusion list. The report revealed that 20 nominations, or 9% of all Asian nominees, were named in 2023, the highest number and percentage yet. More than half of those nominees were associated with everything everywhere all at once. We can herald everything everywhere all at once, but the concern is, how is it a token illustration, rather than looking at a governing body that's really committed to inclusion over time, says Stacey L. Smith, the founder of the Annenberg Inclusion Initiative. We have 35 years where no Asians have been nominated, in the 95-year history. 35 years. How the movie got here. Young first saw the film at a press screening in late February of last year, a month before it came out. He didn't expect it to change the world. Rather, he and many others felt connected to it intimately and individually, the polar opposite of watching a Marvel movie in a packed theater. That's why it's such a gratifying shock to see that all of us, all of us who were having this one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with Hot Dog's Hands Jesus are now forming this mighty army that might actually be getting this thing the Academy Awards recognition and mainstream artistic and commercial success, Young says. That in so many ways has eluded this particular type of defiantly independent Asian American film for so many decades. Everything Everywhere is definitely Asian, it pays homage to Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love, Hong Kong filmmaker Stephen Chow, Kung Fu, and martial arts upon which Michelle Yeoh built her career. In fact, Yeoh's lead character was originally conceived for Jackie Chan. And it is simultaneously a deeply American film and a deeply Daniels one. Its Technicolor multiverse concept originated in 2010, when Daniel Skanert was watching Sherman's March. The documentary's main character meets a linguist who tells him about modal realism, the idea that all possible worlds are real in the same way as the actual world. That's really appealing to us because we're maximalist filmmakers, Quan told Vulture. The multiverse became a vessel for us to point at infinity in a way that most other premises probably wouldn't allow for. A maximalist movie peppered with sight gags ranging from hot dog fingers to butt plugs is, on the surface, an unlikely candidate for best picture. 
But then there is, of course, the everything bagel. Joe Butapaki, Stephanie Su, the film's quasi-villain, has created a singularity, a bagel topped with literally everything in the universe. The bagel is, in many ways, a microcosm for the film. Most of its main cast is Asian, yes, but the actors' backgrounds are diverse, Yo is Malaysian, Quan is Vietnamese, Su is Chinese-American, and James Hong grew up partially in Hong Kong. And Everything Everywhere is a rare trilingual film, rotating between English, Mandarin, and Cantonese. Jin Zhang, the director of the Asian Film and Media Initiative at NYU, considers it both Sinophone cinema and very much an American film. The movie bends genres just as it does the space-time continuum. It's also a melodrama, a central research area of Zhang's, which unlocks pathos and emotion. And it bridges generations, both in its plot and its reception. Its feeling of gamification was a lot for Zhang to take in, even as a film scholar. But her son's generation is so used to moving instantaneously between different dimensions and building worlds, she says. And in that way, the film has this interactive aesthetic, as well. So you need to be engaged in it, instead of just relaxing and chewing over your popcorn. Everything Everywhere All at Once is, at its core, a movie by and for everyone, young and old, Chinese-speaking and not, Asian and American and Asian-American, laundromat-goers and movie stars. It is intrinsically universal in its specificity. Netflix's You Fans divided over insane ending following twist in fourth season. Netflix has released the much-anticipated second part of You's fourth season and viewers are divided over its conclusion, which has been described by fans as insane. The latest season saw serial killer Joe Goldberg, played by Penn Badgley, relocate to London, where the lead character reinvented himself as Professor Jonathan Moore. It has introduced viewers to a host of new characters, including the latest object of his affections Kate Galvin, Charlotte Ritchie, and author Reese Montrose, Ed Spilliers. The first part of the season was released on the streaming platform last month and fans had to wait four weeks to watch the remaining episodes, released today, March 9. Including that serial killer Reese is actually a figment of Joe's imagination, with him back to his murderous ways once again. Towards the end, Joe admits to Kate that he's killed people and they both promise to keep each other good. And he seems to confess everything about his past to her. The ending shows the pair together in New York. Joe has seemingly been able to return by blaming late wife Love Quinn, Victoria Pedretti, for events from their past. He however teases to viewers that he hasn't changed and appears to have simply accepted his dark side, which could lead to more murder if he returns for a fifth season. Viewers appear divided over the ending, with some impressed by the conclusion to the fourth season. The ending has been described as insane by fans on social media. One viewer tweeted earlier, they kinda lost me mid-chapter, but the ending was complete chef's kiss. No spoilers from me, but genuinely impressed. Another wrote, the ending oh my god where is season 5 renewal announcement, while a third said, well I didn't see that coming. Love the ending, season 5 will be even more deliciously evil. Joe accepting his sick self in the end is crazy of them to do and totally amazing, said one fan.